गुड इवनिंग ऑल आई होप आई एम ऑडिबल सो गुड इवनिंग ऑल आई टेक दिस ऑपॉर्चुनिटी टू वेलकम डॉक्टर अविनाश सुपे सर आई थिंक दोज ऑल हु आर इन ऑडियंस नो सर वेल sir is the legendary personality in medical education and also the recipient of various awards uh, sir we are very fortunate to have you with us on today's dr b d parmar memorial oration dr b d parmar sir was a dean at gmc bhavnagar and uh, she has done tremendous he has done tremendous work uh, for medical college bhavnagar i also take this opportunity to welcome our dean sir dr hemant mehta sir and also uh, dr indira parmar madam wife of dr bidhi parmar sir i request uh, dean sir to come speech over to you mehta sir hello am i audible okay can me yes, yes you are audible uh, respected uh, dr indira madam respected dr avinash supe sir Uh, who is our uh, first speaker for very first oration in the series of uh, dr b d parmar memorial oration starting from today the topic chosen by dr chinmay is very apt in the sense that uh, dr b d parmar sir himself was an epitome of leadership with his leadership skill he helped the government medical college bhavnagar to achieve many many milestones he inspired all of us at government medical college bhavnagar and we consider ourselves fortunate enough to witness his leadership quality on this occasion i also salute dr indira ben parmar who herself while effectively carrying out her administrative duties in various position she single handedly to care of dr bidhi parmar sir today i heartily welcome all the delegates who have joined this first dr bidhi parmar member oration not only to pay tribute to dr bidhi parmar sir but also to learn those leadership qualities from a stalwart like uh, dr abhinav supe sir who is also uh, providing effective leadership to med not only to medical education but uh, health care for last so many years so it's a great privilege for all of us to have him here thank you sir thank you uh, madam thank you dr chinmay and thank you all delegates thank you thank you sir madam hello hello yes madam we, are, we can hear you madam please good evening to all delegates our chief guest sir sir and uh, chinmay and all delegates good evening to all it is really a moment of great pride for me government medical college bhavnagar was dr b d parmar's one of the endeavors that he cherished today this same karma bhumi of his organizing a memorial talk remembering him before i say something about dr b d parmar i heartily thank the dean dr hemant mehta sir and all the members of the institute dr avinash supes willingness or to say eagerness for this talk really needs a big round of applause i thank you for showing your gratitude also the extended support by ima is praiseworthy dr chinmay sha he is instrumental in this endeavor parma sahib used to say jinbai a karwan che 
and he was always ready. He was more like a son to him than a colleague. So I cannot thank him because it would be an insult to him. Dr. B. D. Parmar was a great human being. He had never worked for his personal development, publicity or fame. He had great passion, energy and enthusiasm to develop medical colleges and hospitals and to teach UG and PG students in a such a systemic way. So his many students became super specialist and are serving in the best capacity in the society. His divine soul departed on 11th April 2022, but his genuine work will be alive in the minds and heart of the people. He had joined government medical service from January 7, 1979 to 2013. His first 20 years in Surat Medical College and another 20 years in Sauras, that is Jamnagar, Rajkot and Bhavnagar. He actively participated in all public health emergencies. He was a great clinician and academician. Daily, he inquired about death in the last 24 hours. Because of this habit, he was able to put the diagnosis of pneumonic plague epidemic when an 18-year male patient died due to pneumonia in the first 24 hours of admission. It was a very difficult time. Initially, no one agreed that it is a plague epidemic, but he was firm in his clinical acumen. And finally, the diagnosis was confirmed by CDC Atlanta. Thus, he was able to control the epidemic with less mortality and save thousands of lives in Surat City by his best managing capability. Time magazine first noticed it and published his interview. And after the India Today considered him as a celebrity of that year. When he was appointed as medical superintendent at Rajkot and Surat, on the daily basis, he would sit casualties and look a general round in the hospital. He tried to develop all the departments, whether clinical or non-clinical. So all the poor patients get better care and free treatment in the government hospital. While he was appointed as medical superintendent at Rajkot, the hospital, while he was appointed as medical superintendent at Rajkot, the hospital blood bank license was cancelled due to inadequate space. Immediately, he made space available and reapplied for a blood bank license. Meanwhile, there was a severe earthquake in Kutch and Saurashtra. Bhuj and Ajmer hospital, uh, Anja hospitals were damaged, so all the patients were shifted to Rajkot and Ahmedabad hospitals. In such a big disaster, many patients required emergency blood transfusions. So he instructed the blood bank in charge and the professor of pathology to start blood tapping. He told the professor of pathology that if any legal action was taken, I might go to jail. But I can't see the death of any patient without blood. Thus, he never compromised for the patient care and that much courage he had to save the human life. While he was appointed as a dean of Bhavnagar Medical College, he tried to develop both college and hospital in such a way that MCI inspectors were always pleased and given recognition of 150 PG seat, UG seats and also sanctioned PG seats in all departments from 17 to 90 PG seats during his tenure. Sauras region has uh, many problems of renal problems are there. So he also started new dialysis unit in Sarti Hospital, Bhavnagar with uh, purchase of 50 new dialysis machine in one go. He has also worked for organ donation in Mission Mode at Bhavnagar along with his colleague 
neurosurgeon dr kabarya he always help students staff members and colleagues with any problem whether it might be legal function financial psychological or family issue doctors all over the world are given the status of next to god because they are life savers who work tirelessly for mankind he devoted his life for the same thank you all and i want to thank the all staff members of the government medical college bhavnagar and sarti hospital from class 1 to class 4 they had given him too much love and affection thank you thank you thank you very much madam and i think now uh, if you look at the topic chosen by sir it's uh, exactly fitting uh, to the life of dr bidi parmar sir so i request sir uh, that please again uh, we are very much thankful to you uh, for accepting our invitation and uh, uh, delivering this talk thank you very much sir uh, for taking your time from your busy schedule uh, over to you sir thank you thank you chinmay can you hear me well hello yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir Fine, yes sir, sir. If, there is any issue, if there is an issue just let me know i think thank you so much uh, dr chinmay and uh, dr parmar and dr hemant mehta for inviting me and i think it's really nice of all of you to really give this kind of an tribute oration to your beloved dean i think i had uh, interaction with him whenever i have come to bhavnagar and it was very pleasant interaction and therefore i thought uh, this is a topic which i chose was leading change and effective leadership in healthcare so i have no conflict of intellects to declare thanks to dr chinmay shah team of gmc bhavnagar dr parmar family and also my close friend dr krishna shishadri can you see my slides which are moving yes sir yes sir. we can see sir yes sir okay. yes sir yes sir okay okay dr bd parmar as i think you know was from ug from ahmedabad he did his md med medicine again from km school of post graduate institute then he was tutor in gmc surat where he did this wonderful work on plague and then he was transfer worked also as rajkot and and then he was retired at gmc bhavnagar after his working as seven and a half years he was expert not only in medicine but also in ayush and management par excellence leader as was uh, talked by dr indira parmar was a real fighter during crf and life threatening accidents i think this is something we should learn and i owe my tribute to him and i think with that we will now start working on the topic now leadership is all about change the best way to get people to enter into unknown terrain is to make it desirable by taking them there by their imaginations you know whether steve jobs did it whether noel trichy did it so there are so many kinds of leadership issue but leadership is all about change and there are many good quotes saying that if you want to make enemies try to change something you know i think this is so right as a dean when you want to make a change there is in a medical college you will realize that people start looking at you as an enemy you know everything is going on smooth why does he want to change why does he want a quality you know that's a question everybody really ask but the most important is that if you want to truly understand something try to change it and this is very interesting because if you want to go to the depth of a particular thing especially in a system you may think about changing so change is part of leadership and leaders come and they try to change everything and we are part of this change every time now when we talk about leadership it can be defined as the ability of an individual to influence a group of people to achieve a goal very simple definition though there are many definitions i thought this is one of the most simple definition if an individual can influence group of people to achieve a goal i think that is all about leadership so there is a need for effective leadership in healthcare as we know we are working and during corona time during our medical school medical college we always see that effective leadership is essential we are always looking for who is going to come as the next dean because dean changes many things in our life as a as a professor it requires for motivation innovation effective patient care patient safety 
improving working with clinical teams, sorting out issues with emergency context and many other aspects. And what is important is transformational leadership has often been prescribed as a gold standard of healthcare leadership. Because the healthcare is changing so fast in our own lifetime, we saw from no ultrasound to now PET scan. And if the leadership doesn't change, the kind of patient-doctor communication is changing, we need to have a leader who will be transforming the whole leadership. Now, before you change anything, in your career what does it take to change we must really understand and if somebody wants to change anything man cannot discover new oceans unless he has the courage to lose sight of the shore see on a shore you are on a safe side if somebody wants to go into ocean he has to lose sight of whether it was columbus or whether it was anybody who found out america he had to courage to lose the sight of the shore and take his boat or whatever ship into the ocean. Now, if that is what you have, then only you can make a change. Now, if you look at the elements of change, it has six, I mean, mainly four, five elements. And these are very interesting elements I'm going to show to you. You have to have vision. You have to have skills of change. You have to have incentives to the people. You have to have resources for change. And you have to have an action plan. Now, let's look. If you have no vision, there's a confusion. If you have no skills, there's anxiety and what is called, called as hyposkilia. You know, this is something which we see many times. We have no incentives. The whole thing will get slowly adopted. So there has to be some incentives, whether there is monetary or non-monetary. If there are no resources, there's likely to be frustration. This happens in a public sector many times that you, everybody has a vision, everybody has thing, but there is no funding. And lastly, if there is no action plan, you will always find there is false starts. So it starts, people open up a particular thing, but it doesn't work. And therefore, if you really see, if you, somebody wants to see, if you don't want confusion, if you don't want anxiety, you don't want slow adoption, you don't want frustration, and you don't want false start, I think we need to have a proper all these things properly in your system. Now, what are characters of a successful change? Let's look at it very carefully. That means, so just a minute. So characters of a successful change are context, curriculum of a change, communication, human resource development, performance dip and leadership. So I'm going to take you to one by one. What are the characteristics of a successful change? So if you look at the context, the context is so many things. Like the first thing is about mission and goals of your change. Now you have a philosophy of your institution. And when you are bringing an innovation, the innovation is aligned with the mission, philosophy and values then only people will accept. Let me ask you a very simple thing. Every college has its own face. Every college has its own culture. Now, if you have a mission and goal and culture, and if your innovation doesn't fit into that culture, people will not accept in your college. Secondly, history of change in the organization. If there's a good team which has caused previous change, you will find that the making a change becomes successful is very high. Every institution has a politics. There's a lot of internal networking. networking. Now you'll always find that you always find some strong advocates. Now what does Dean do? Dean has a coterie, but more than Dean should find out strong advocates for that change. He should find out people who are likely to help him to take that further and these should be the advocates of a change. Then, there should be definitely a strong buying from powerful individuals of action. Maybe it is outside the institution. Maybe it is the administrators. Maybe it's the students. Maybe it is the some staff members. Or maybe even in the others, other part of the system. But we need to have a powerful buying to make a change. Even you don't want to make a small change in a small system in your OPD. I think you need a lot of people to help you in this. And of course, there's a question of informal networks. 
people in a medical college or in a hospital or a healthcare has a lot of informal networks and these networks work and even if you feel that you know many times you become as a leader you know you become a dean i don't know how many of you have become dean or hods you suddenly have a glass a kind of a door in between you people don't come and tell you when you go into this position and there are a lot of informal networks beyond you which are working so you need to understand them and if you understand them well then only you will find that it will you will be able to make a change of course resource is one of the most important aspect money and manpower both are equally important and you should really help them and get them on the board if you are making a change external resources and support you know you should have a wonderful networking beyond what you are really going to do you know you should not really talk about only your own institutions take help of many others and what kind of a structure you are going to have think about what organizational structure you are going to have you have what kind of, now especially in a medical college you will find dean is a neck of the whole institution and he is controls everything and there are a lot of others but there are many institutions where there is a parallel structure so you need to think about how i am going to really do this kind of change now when anybody wants to do say simple thing like a cbme curriculum somebody wants to change this was a proposed structure which was done mainly like curricular committees me units hods ai teams phase wise curricular committees so we tried to create a parallel structure because then the acceptance of a change is much easier because dean alone cannot really do this the second aspect of characteristics of a successful change is a curriculum of change now curriculum of change means everybody should be ready that yes there is a need for change you know in a house we say yes my fridge is not working i need to get a new fridge if i want to have one system not working i need to so there is a need for change and there has to be scope and complexity of the innovation many times if the thing is a complex you need to really have better kind of a plan when you are really trying to do it now there's something called as a cooperative climate you know whenever you have done a good work then you realize that it worked because of a good cooperative system or there was a good team and how do people create a cooperative climate good leaders create a cooperative climate uh, a kind of an atmosphere or climate so there are two kind of client problems one is the need for social acceptability that means how much people are going to accept this and what is the need for individual accomplishment whenever somebody is working for an organization he should also see how i am individually going to grow now if there is no individual accomplishment and there is no social acceptability or if there is a high kind of individual accomplishment and people want to achieve themselves and they have very low social acceptability there is a lot of competition and that usually does not really help you to really grow if everything is low people avoid this kind of a change nothing happens if there is a high social acceptability there is a lot of demand which is coming but there is not much of individual accomplishment then people will try to accommodate but if both the things are high that means there is a need also in the society at the same time everybody can grow that's the time collaboration comes into picture and this is where you will find many people sometimes have a compromising kind of an attitude you know people try to adjust between and try to compromise but try to go towards collaboration rather than avoidance whenever you want to do it so that's a leader who would develop a cooperative climate in such a way that we are able to go to the uh, collaboration end participation by organization members you have to really see that everybody is coming on the board and that will really predict the success the third aspect of any successful change is the communication how you are communicating with your group you know normally there is a way of communicating me me people get awareness they say i know it yes you start understanding it yes i got it what it is many of them accept it yes they will buy it and then very few will commit to you that it matters to them in any organization if you are able to increase the number of people who have a commitment rather than only aware of it the change will be more successful so what you would like to really do you have to go from inform clarify involve engage to achieve 
and that will bring from awareness to commitment so when people start committing themselves people will get better engaged and they will get achieved look around your experiences many of you i see are hods and i'm sure you will realize people around you when you people get engaged people get involved they will always have initially they may clarify you know they will try to understand your project but over a period of time they will start achieving it most important is trust a good leader should trust people everything i cannot keep in my own hand without trust you have nothing trust is glue of life it's the most effective ingredient of effective communication whether it's your family whether it's your department or whether it's your institution so if you look at the trust in organization you look at four uh, again corners mutual trust plus respect is on one hand and willingness or freedom to disagree you know what is the atmosphere in the organization and that's where the leadership also comes i'll go into more details about this but if you realize if the dean listens to you or in you know, a hod listens to you is one aspect and how much he trusts you how much he respects you now if there is a low freedom every and there is a low mutual respect people just don't do anything you know just keep quiet and they run away if there is a high kind of an atmosphere but there is a low mutual respect you start seeing the conflict if there is a low again willingness to freedom to disagree and there is a high mutual trust people think group thing they don't want to disturb dean but they still feel that i should not really go and talk to the uh, some autocratic hod but again if you have a high mutual trust and high willingness freedom to disagree people start doing collaboration and look around you you will find all kinds of examples around you and then you start looking at them yes some hods are very very autocratic they don't uh, kind of give any importance to or no trust in their juniors and nobody really talks against them everybody is fearing about them and then you find conflicts come and all other things start coming in the institutions most important for any successful change is human resource development now i think human resource develops with training and reward you need to give proper rewards you cannot say like look at this i decided to recognize you for your job performance and i named one of my pencils after you i mean it's a joke but if you are giving peanuts to people you will get a peanuts from outside you must give them something which is good on which they will build themselves and similarly if somebody is doing workload you will say i'm going motivational posters that's not something so you not only do training for them send them for training give them something where they will be also visible and you also reward them appropriately over a period of time and last but last two are very important that is performance dip what do you mean by performance dip now see whenever somebody starts a successful kind of a change you know initially there are blockages people focus on obstacles people would magnify problems in much bigger you know every day we see a political parties continue to do it same happens in institutions there's a small problem but it is magnified by many it leads to many times irritation aggressiveness and depression that is again so initially there is a denial then there is a reaction then there is adaptation you know people accept slowly and then they reorient new motivation positive view of future look ahead every change you try to go through you will find this even if it's a curricular change whether you want to bring any new system people go through all this maybe these curves may be different slightly lower or higher but you will always find that people go through these kind of curves so you try to evaluate every time and that becomes also part of the success you would like to go through plan deliver assess track progress evaluate and yes you know this cycle is continuous and everybody has to go through your project so take regular kind of evaluation meetings every two months three months to see how i'm doing and i think good leader would always do that so that brings us to most important aspect of successful change in any healthcare setup is a leadership and that's where we are going to come today now what is the difference between leadership and management you know these are the two words i would like to really make it very clear to you now leader copes with change manager copes with complexity leader challenges the status quo 
and manager works with the status quo manager is mainly an executor leader is a changer leader will ask why manager asks what and leader plans long term while manager organizes people motivates and inspires administrates control and focuses on people while focuses on system and if you really see leader looks into future and he works in the present that is the manager so there are a lot of differences between direction and planning so mainly leadership is one who thinks and takes the institution ahead management continues to maintain the institution now if that is the problem very nicely said by peter drucker who is a management guru management is doing things right leadership is doing the right things very nicely said that means management he has an agenda he will continue to do that agenda leadership will think ahead he will try to see if this is not going well how i can make a change into the whole system so why transformation efforts fail let's look at it what are the common causes of failure first thing people don't establish a sense of urgency i mean you have to tell people this is something which if you don't do it or uh, you will not be able to do and the i mean the whole medical college will go behind not creating a powerful enough guiding coalition lacking a vision you don't communicate well you don't remove the obstacles and not systematic planning i told you the first five most important aspects of a change declaring victory too soon many times we are happy with an initial victory and later on that fails we are very good in inaugurating but after that inauguration the system works for a month and then it later on collapses and not anchoring changes into the institutional culture so what is important is that you make a change so that it will become your new institution culture so if you are able to do that then you have laid that change very properly so there are 50 reasons not to change people give 50 reasons not to change and i know we have gone through all this you know we have tried it before ye to chalta nahi hai apna institution mein ye kuch uska fad hai wo aisa sab kyun kar raha hai no problem when you you become all of you some of you become leaders you will realize we have to face all this unless people start seeing the results so there is a resistance to change and what kind of a resistance people have either it's an active resistance or a passive or it's a verbal or the way they react or behave now one of the simple way verbal passive is they start making jokes of you they ridicule you evasiveness silence you know it's not so easy to become a leader i have realized because whatever you do there are people who start looking at you you know i mean look at how many times you must have commented on your deans or anybody like this if there is a behavioral people show apathy you know sometimes you know you are in a meeting and you ask somebody who is going to take lead and there is a complete silence that means what people are showing a typical behavioral attitude you know sometimes you go to another institution and you want to bring a change like say dr parmar went from this to this another institution you come with lot of enthusiasm and you try to say yes this is necessary but over a period of time there is a complete apathy if you are very active resistance people can start threats arguments rumors you know people can plant sometimes all this but if there is a behavioral people start disrupting morchas forming factions like the splitting of the whole faculty against you there could be different kind of resistance so when you are thinking about leadership and management both are essential so you not only have to think about vision you produce this change and movement but you also produce this order and consistency so a good leader also has managerial kind of symptom if he wants to execute you can't just have a vision if you are not able to implement that you will never have a change so when you are leading a change you need both either they could be two people who are working closely or you could have a committee who can be working closely for management but whatever ideas are there they have to be properly implemented so how do you really use leadership and management in change both are there and what happens if one part is weak if you have a low leadership and if you have a low management these transformation efforts go nowhere nothing happens you know that will not happen if management is good 
but the leadership is low. That means the vision is low. It will be a short term efforts. Long term effects rarely achieved because when the leadership grows or the management changes, everything will still get flopped. If the management is low but the leadership is high, successful initially but fail after erratic results become erratic because management is not supporting, it's not implementing. So if leadership and management both are good, then only we'll find a successful transformation will come. Having said that, who is a leader and what are his characteristics? You know, it's very important to really understand who is a leader and what are his and her characteristics. And I'm sure all of us have gone through this n number of times to see what a leader is usually. Now, characteristic of an effective leader. First, he creates high performing teams. He doesn't work alone. A good leader will have a high performing team. And I think whenever I have worked in various institutions, I have so many teams with me. There's a particular kind of a function and there's a high performing team. You can sit with them, give an ideas, try to change. But these high performing teams are the one which are managing the whole job. More effective in meeting job related demands. You know, I think effective leaders like our medical institutions or healthcare institutions. The classic example was Corona. People who could treat and make the services easily available, they were better leaders. Connecting with higher authorities. A good leader in a healthcare, because see, healthcare very rarely you will find will have, especially in a government sector or in a private sector, whether it's in management or whether it's a higher kind of authority, a good communication is there. Then only the institution or the, something will get a change. Otherwise, if there's a disconnect between your higher management and the authorities, like higher authorities, like say municipality, government or trust, you will find nothing will move. Foster renewed loyalty and commitment. People should have faith in him, loyal to them. Increase motivational levels and willing to work hard. Now, when we start the staff working hard and they start involved in the whole thing, you know that the leader is very effective. And of course, most important aspect of any leader is personal integrity. I think I have seen in our whole institutions, if you are personally integration, people start respecting you. You know, they may not say if somebody is very corrupt or somebody is not so, is working for himself, people don't follow him. I mean, he has to show personal integrity. And if you try to say that, yes, I can buy people on rewards. No, it doesn't happen in a medical field. You know, it may happen at a very lower field when you are trying to maybe buy something else. But in a medical field, when you are dealing with a very high intelligent people, personal integrity is one of the most important aspect of it. So let's define a leader. I want you to just take a half a minute and think a leader that you worked for or observed. What does this person do and what qualities does this person have that make you admire him or her as a leader? And it may be anybody. It may be in your school teacher or it may be your headmaster. It could be your principal of your college or it could be dean of your college, HOD, or it could be any other organization you're working. Think about when you talk about a leader who comes in your mind and then take a moment and find out what was his style and what was the kind of qualities he had, which made you admire him or her as a leader. And I'm specifically putting both him or her because I think today the women leaders are so, I mean, it was a time when in healthcare, we never found so many women leaders, but today I find women leaders are as equal, they are equivalent, some of them are much better than the men leaders. And they have done such an excellent job. So when you think about all this, you have to really see what qualities does a person have that makes you admire him or her. Now, if you really see, just try to put out what were their qualities, how they were taking decisions, how they were managing people, what kind of a support they were giving. Now, that decides how, what kind of a quality you are doing. So if you look at leadership styles, there are so many kinds of styles. And it's beyond my 
this talk to really go through every kind of a thing. You know, if you look at the today, we are talking about 15th August. We are completing 75 years of Indian freedom. Now, how did we get a freedom? Did we get freedom by an autocratic leader like Hitler or somebody like that? No. We got a freedom by a servant leadership. What do you mean by servant leadership? Servant leaders are leaders like Mahatma Gandhi, Nelson Mandela. All those are servants. It's a type of a leadership. It's servant doesn't mean servant, but he was the person who served people. And in he tried to bring up that servant leadership. There could be transformation leader who tried to change the hospitals, change the whole institution, change the culture of an organization. So there are visionary leaderships, bureaucratic leaderships, directing leadership. They give you kind of a thing. There could be paternal and maternal leaders, situational leadership. You know, people who have done extremely well in Corona times, participative leadership, democratic. So there are, you will find charismatic leadership, strategic leadership. There are so many kinds of leaderships you will find in the literature. Now, if you have so many kinds of leadership, Let's go a little more deeper into this. And you know, when I was, first time I went to Famer or something, I was asked to style my personality, you know, MBTI, Myers-Brick type inventory. And then they, after personality, they said, okay, this is your style, but there are some limitations of your style. You try to change yourself. And I think this is a kind of an coaching or a kind of an somebody gives you then only you are able to understand this whole management science and then you'll be able to do well as a so i feel as an if you are going to become an hod or dean it's time you spent on all these leadership styles and try to understand your own leadership try to understand your own decision making and then see okay how i'm going to change myself if i'm going to have a large institution like say a hospital like km i'm sure has more than about 5 to 6000 people when I was a director, I had 23,000 people working under me. Now, when you're 23,000 high-ended people working with you, who are excellent, intelligent, then you have to think about what kind of a style you're going to really use. Look at when somebody is doing a bigger organizations, how they really try to look at these aspects. So, the one kind of a leadership is an autocratic leadership. That means authoritarian. You know, sometimes you find these kind of leaderships. Manager retains all power. Sab mere hat mein hona chahiye. Like a sasu or what you called as a mother-in-law. Chabi mere hat mein rehne chahiye. Classical approach. Manager is decision-making authority. And manager does not consult employees for input. Nobody he asks. He does everything on his own. Me ye karna hai means ye karna hai. Bas. He doesn't, he will not listen to anybody. Subordinates expected to obey orders without explanation. He doesn't communicate anything. And motivation is provided through structured rewards and punishments. When we use autocratic, when there are new untrained employees, when they come to you and they are still in the first few days when they're not training, just use them. Try to bring them into your culture. When employees are motivated, especially when they are young and they have come and joined the organization for the first time, employees do not respond to any other leadership style. If that may be the reason why if you are is a very indisciplined, then it's better to use autocratic. High volume production needs. You know, you have to produce and give results. Limited time for decision making. You know, Corona was a classic example where people tried to use autocratic. And manager's power is challenged by an employee. If that is something which is there, then sometimes, you know, people use autocratic. If I ask who has given you the, there's a, I mean, you know, many times you see in the meetings, if somebody asks you, who are, you are not doing well, then probably the HOD will take into autocratic kind of thing. So there have been many autocratic leaders before, you know, politicians, military, you know, people who sometimes, you know, they are all, these are autocratic leaders. People who do, and, and I'm sure there are examples of this like Hitler. Advantages of autocratic leadership, it's a fast decision making. It, everything happens very quick. You say yes or no, everything happens quickly. You know, single uh, leader or single owned uh, kind of an hospital owner, you find this is what it happens. Improves productivity and efficiency. 
structured and disciplined approach, clear communication, control, and helps in crisis management like Corona. But there may not be growth. There may be a little limitations of the growth. There may be one-sidedness in autocratic leadership. So there are a lot of disadvantages of an autocratic leadership. Discourages ideas and inputs. So there, there's a progression may not be every time I, I as per it. There, and the micromanagement may not be all the time good. Lack of creativity sometimes. Dependable system. If that person is absent or is sick, everything falls. And the employees don't find an opportunity for growth. And it also might affect the work culture negatively because everybody just starts it. And many times you'll find organizations survive out of this, but then don't grow out of this autocratic leadership all the time. The second kind of a thing which we see commonly in our medical colleges is many times our deans, some of the people are bureaucratic. I mean, these are the people who go by book. And especially sometimes you see book me kya likha hai? What is in the rule book? What the circular says? Now, if somebody starts working like that, you know, everything must be done according to the procedure of policy. They start asking, SOP kya hai? Policy kya hai? It, if it is not covered by the book, the manager refers to the next level. No paper upar bejde da. And police officer more than a leader, you know. And these kind of things work to some extent in the medical college. But then you find that things all slow down. You know, whenever there's a very positive dean and suddenly you find a bureaucratic dean who doesn't sign any papers and every time he refers to his higher authorities, you find there's a, always a problem. Bureaucratic dean. Yeh line mein nahi hai, MCI ka book mein nahi hai, yeh is mein nahi hai, toh hoga nahi ho. I think this is not what we want in our organization. It may be good when you're using bureaucratic performing routine tasks need for standard procedures if somebody is doing say procedures in surgery or something or maybe you sometimes you require little away but protocol it has to be consent has to be taken you have to counsel the patient blood has to be organized all that sop is a checklist phenomena what we say is good for that use of dangerous or delicate equipment if somebody is doing for endoscopes or laparoscopes you know this is something where a bureaucratic approach works because then it is maintained better Safety or security training being conducted and tasks that require handling cash, especially, you know, cash, you have to be very bureaucratic. If I say I need this much money, it has to be shown to me next day. If I don't be bureaucratic and I try to sign blindly, you know, I'll be in trouble. So this is area where you should be bureaucratic. So normally bureaucratic leaders are usually accountants. Many of these people who deal with the cash or financial things, most of them are bureaucratic leaders. There are different kinds of leaders which are called as democratic leaders, often referred to as a participative style, keeps employees informed, shares decision. You know, he will call every 10 people and take a decision. Many of them you'll find, Dean will call Pope, five people, all HODs, and then try to take a decision. Many times the decision is very slow. Sometimes it doesn't take, it takes days to take a participative decision. But if it is taken, then it gets implemented very fast. You know, if autocratic decision is taken very quickly, but then it takes time for implementation, participative decision takes time for taking decision, but gets implemented better because there are many people involved and they have taken themselves to a say. So keep employees informed, encourage employees to share a decision making and problem solving, to provide opportunities for employees to develop a high sense of personal growth. And people are happy if they do and participate in, and especially there are complex problems that requires a lot of inputs and encourage team building and participation. So normally you find democratic leaders are something who build projects. And it may be better if you're really trying to do projects sometimes. In, and I'm sure parliament and all these are all democratic leaders. So democratic leader has some advantages and disadvantages. Democratic leader will have, a, with this whole system, will have creativity, collaboration, and engagement of people. But it's time consuming. It requires expertise of different kinds and it requires participation of if everybody has to come to the meeting. If people don't come to meeting, you will never have a democratic leadership. So different phases of leadership. You know, I just want to give you some examples. You know, I mean, you will find some are autocratic like Hitler or Martha. 
bureaucratic. The classical was PN session. You know, he changed the whole election system in India. But he was bureaucratic. He made everybody go on that. Yeah. Before session and after session, there has been a complete change in the way elections were conducted. Margaret Thatcher, Indira Gandhi were charismatic leaders. Democratic leaders, some of these, you know, Pepsi, PepsiCo companies, Indira. And she, again, you know this, if you listen to her, she's a democratic leader. And there are leaders like Warren Buffett, you know, American business magnate. He's a laissez faire. Now, what is this laissez faire kind of leadership? So there are three basic leadership, like say autocratic, democratic, and laissez faire leadership. Now, the ear of the leader must ring with the voices of people. So I think you should go very close to the people. You know, another Wilson very said very nicely. So there could be, I'll come back to the laissez faire leadership later, but there could be coercive leadership. There are people who uh, try to say that if you don't do this, I'll punish you. And most obvious type of power a leader has. You know, good leaders use coercive power only as a last resort. Like today, sophisticated in a complex workplace, we should not use excessive coercive power. You know, Dean has a tremendous power to uh, stop anybody, stop somebody's pay, dismiss him, suspend him. But in a healthcare, because most of the people are equal, you know, it's a very different between a company and a healthcare. The healthcare you'll find, they're all professors, they're all learned people. Many of them are PhDs, they are intelligent people. So we should not really use coercive power in them. To meet very short-term goals or when left with no other choice, in times of crisis, you should use it. Now, transactional leadership and transformational leadership. Transactional leadership is something you continue to do regular things and give them interest into this. Like motivate them by exchange processes. Like what do businessmen do? They would give them bonuses. They give them wage. They give overtime. And focuses on, they have to say that, okay, today we have to have 30 cars have to be done. So that is a transactional leadership. And encourage a leader to adopt their styles and behavior to meet expectations of followers. So leaders who want to be in control or they're approaching deadlines, then you do transactional. But transformational leadership is again, charismatic and visionary. Now, if somebody wants to make a complete change, you want to do a complete change in organization. You have many examples in the literature where they change their uh, complete organizations. You know, some of these you will find that these are the people who would look at the trans transformational leadership. So it instills a feeling of confidence and admiration and commitment. It stimulates followers intellectually. They're involved into the whole thing and they positively look at the whole thing. So when leaders want members to be active part of an organization and have ownership of it, you build a team and you have a long-term plan, then you become a transformational. Transformation is not so easy in a government setups because people have to be motivated for a long period of time, which happens. But th there are so many other factors like transfers and other things which may affect sometimes the motivation of the people. And lastly, I feel laser fair is a kind of a thing where you say, okay, let people do, I will be quiet. I will not interfere too much. You don't give any direction. You know, there are some deans who are like that. They don't do anything and gives followers as much as freedom. You know, like they say that you, every HOD then becomes a powerful center and all authority of power is given to followers. There are some HODs who give everything to their juniors. Every major decision is given to juniors and they would like to just come, have a cup of tea and go. Now, employees, if they are very highly skilled, experienced and educated, you know, you are all professors, everybody is very highly skilled. Employees have a pride in their work. They are doing all good work. Then you did not control them too much. And outside experts such as staff specialists, you know, sometimes there are people who come from outside. You have no direct control over them. Use this kind of an approach. And employees are trustworthy and experienced. You know, people don't like to be uh, going through these windows or the magnet, I mean, magnifying glasses all the time. Use this approach. So there are benefits and downsides. When the team members have skills to succeed, when the group members are experts and, and they're dependable, you use this. But if there's a lack of low governance, people are not that many experts, there's a low accountability, don't use this. Otherwise, there'll be a lot of chaos and you will not be able to do anything. So, this was a very nice leadership grid, which I learned, you know, 
a leader has two concerns. One is a task concern. That means I have some goals. I have to achieve something. And there is something how I make people happy. Now there are if the if I have a very high concern from people and low for task, which be yoga to be chalega, people should be happy. Then they make a country club manager. That means what they'll call everybody, everybody will have a cup of tea, everybody will be happy. That is a country club manager. But then they'll not achieve anything. On the other side, if you have a leader who is only interested about task and doesn't bother about people, he will be an autocratic, authority, obedient manager. People will always say bad thing about his behavior. And the work will be done, but people will not be happy. And if he's neither concerned from people, neither task concerned, he's an impoverished manager. Nobody really bothers about him. So you should try to become a team manager. That means you should have and task, but you should also think about people. So many of the people take middle of the road manager. That means they focus on the work output as well as people moral. Sometimes so you remain between seven and seven. That is the kind of fun thing you achieve. Many times you are able to achieve nine and nine. That is good. But if you are able to achieve seven and seven on zero to ten scale, I think that also is good. And even if you are able to do this, you'll be able to do a good job as a leader. So the coming to the part when you want to change something, you need to select a style. In a large organizations, some people are motivated by reward. Some people are motivated by punishment. So social systems work best with the chain of command. And when people have agreed to do a job, a part of the deal is that they cede authority to their leader. You know, people love leaders if you do it properly. And so this was a very nice kind of a theory that if you really look at people around you, there are some people you need to delegate, some people you need to support, some need you to coach, and some need people you need to direct. So if you find people who are highly competent and highly committed, you just need to delegate them. If people are highly competent, but their commitment is little weak, capable, but be caution performer. So in this situation, be supportive, but keep a watch. If there are some competencies weak and there's a low commitment, I think you have to coach them. And if there's a low competence, but high commitment, this is where you start directing them. And I think this is the way you would like to go. And you would like to take this further. So different leadership styles are needed for different situations. And leaders should know which approach you would like to really take in these situations. Now, if you really see, if you look at the whole world, this is a very interesting slide I came across. UK, USA, France, Sweden, Poland, China, Germany, and all over the world, look at the kind of leadership styles they use you know and this is the most predominant style or the kind of hierarchy they have and if you look at more developed side or different side you will have more circles while if you look at indonesia india there's a vertical kind of things every country has its own culture so you have to really look at and when i'm sure all of you some of you must have gone across the world and when we see around the world, you find different kinds of kind of cultures which are there in leadership style. But what is important is to evaluate people around you, look at all the factors, and then see how I'm going to do this. So, friends, I'm sure we have come to around nine o'clock, so I'm going to close now. A classic leadership style includes autocratic, laissez-faire, and democratic. These are the classic three styles, but there are many styles. Transactional style is to give rewards and punishments, getting tasks completed. Transformational leadership is encouraging employees to give. Uh, best at their work about motivation to be positive through common mission and vision. And servant leadership is man goal is to serve. Like many times that is the goal. And visionary leadership is transformational plus futuristic. You have different kinds of leadership. What we need to understand when you become leader, we still develop our own style. But what is important is try to use a particular style, especially as you start growing in your field for a particular situation. You may not be able to go completely change 
but at least try to see that is better and i feel that works based on situations at different levels because in a medical institution or in a healthcare you're dealing from the highest level phd to a one first year mbbs student or first year nursing student you cannot have the same kind of a leadership style you have to have a different kind of a leadership style for a different situation different people different goals if you understand this i'm sure all of you will be able to achieve what you want to achieve so in time of a profound change the learners inherit the earth when the learned find themselves beautifully equipped to deal with a world that no longer exists that means the problem with the future is that it keeps stirring into the present and we have been all seeing this over a period of time so we don't know what is going to happen in next 10 years but we should be ready as you are going to walk through this particular snow you will realize that we need to find newer problems we have to assess that situation and try to be a good change agent because ultimately leadership is all about change thank you so much and i would really stop sharing and uh, i understand this is an oration so there may not be any questions but if you have any kind of questions or queries you can send them to me and i can of course we really answer try to my best thank you so much thank you thank you very much sir and it's like a crash course for new hod or dean so i think uh, we have recorded it and whenever anybody is going to take a position of hod or a dean they must listen sir your uh, this oration miss uh, from the bottom of my heart very much thankful to you sir i also request uh, our dean dr ahmed mehta sir uh to say a few words thank you dr chinmay thank you sir thank you for this fantastic elaboration uh, we learn lot of things uh, uh chinmay rightly said that i think uh, uh, we should uh, listen to this recorded speech off and on to make our and uh, our said ourselves a uh, good leader uh, you narrated everything such an in a nice manner uh i think uh, the one hour is not sufficient for you because uh, you have a tremendous experience on this we learn a lot of things sir thank you very much thank you it was fantastic sure thank you thank you uh, uh indira madam uh, would you like to say something thank you sir avinash sir also uh, dean sir and uh, chinmay i am also i also work as a dean and superintendent uh, in colleges and i also learn many things from you i think those who are your attendees they will appreciate because they will appreciate every word i said because i have spoken it from my experience of handling so many thousands of people yes sir thank you thank you very much sir now i request our dean sir to please uh, hand over a certificate of uh, dr bd parmar memorial oration uh, so i request samik to please share the screen of the certificate and sir we will uh, courier the hard copy yes sir yes sir sir you are muted sir you are muted mehta sir you are muted now you will have to guide me on how to hand over certificate on a virtual mode i have not never done this before <laughs> yes sir uh, sir sir doc mr samik will share the screen sir of the certificate okay okay let me Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, sir. sir. Thank, you. Thank you, sir. Please go ahead. Meta, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, sir. This is the certificate. I am officially handing over to you. Will uh, 
send you in a thank you, thank you I, so I, I think already sent you through email sure thank you thank you so much it's a really honor thank and you. pleasure for me to talk to all of you and it has been it was wonderful thank you thank you so much sir it was wonderful listening to okay. you it has already been wonderful listening to you thank you sir yeah so at the end uh, let me thank uh, again uh, super sir for taking a time having an excellent excellent session on the leadership thank you dean sir uh, for being with us thank you indira madam and thank you all of you uh, in a part of tribute to dr bidi parmar sir so we are closing the session thank you thank you all and we will be sharing the youtube link of the recorded uh, session uh, soon thank you again thank you very much thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you sir bye